All right, welcome everyone. My name is Michael O'Brien. I'm the sales director at A&R Solar, located in Portland and Seattle. And today we're gonna be interviewing a customer of ours, actually a customer three times over uh, by the name of Nicholas. And Nicholas is gonna talk a little bit about himself. So Nicholas, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. A pleasure to have you. And uh, it's been an honor to have you as a customer three times over. Much appreciated. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, start with your your wonderful name and how you pronounce it, and how you found yourself in Portland. Your your origin story. Sure. My name is Nicholas Papethimiu. I am an architect and general contractor here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I was also trained as a structural engineer and a city planner. Um, in terms of why I'm in Portland, my wife is a native of the Pacific Northwest. She's very proud to have been born here in Portland. Uh, once we moved here, honestly, I spent about 10 years working for other people, trying to understand the lay of the land and the local building economy. And in about 2014, I started my own firm, Infill PDX, focused specifically on affordable housing and infill development. And it was in that capacity, I ended up reaching out to you guys at A&R Solar about providing photovoltaics on some of my affordable housing projects. It seems like you also have a knack for property investing and you own some rental properties. Tell us about that. Uh, certainly, yeah. Uh, we think of our property investments as ways to test our theories about how to make better affordable housing and not just as investment vehicles. So. You know, in our mind, affordable housing should be close in as opposed to at the periphery of the city. It should be integrated with existing urban environments as opposed to confined to new towers and projects. Uh, it should be financially remunerative to the tenants as well as the owners. And that's something that's very hard to do. But these are people, by definition, they don't have a lot of money. So any money we can put back in their pockets means so much more to them than the same amount of money would mean to me. Um, so that was something that we'd like to explore with affordable housing. Uh, also, a lot of BIPOC and minority communities are really overrepresented in low income housing markets. Uh, these are people that have faced historic and systemic uh, discrimination. And one area that we see that in is uh, health outcomes. We really at Infill PDX view housing as a form of public health. So we have a responsibility to use our healthiest materials and our most sustainable strategies in providing housing for these people. So that's a lot to ask. Um, that is not something that is supported by the current model of affordable housing development. But I think Infill PDX has shown that it can be done. Um, together with partners like a &R Solar, uh, we've built new construction uh, duplexes at $150 a square foot that are net zero, that do win design awards, that make the investors money, and also return money to the tenants. Uh, that are embedded in thriving existing communities and that integrate a mix of socioeconomic uh, strata. So um, it can be done. And I think a big part of that is, you know, sustainable energy solutions like a &R Solar. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another part of my desire to open my own firm was a reaction to the inefficiencies in affordable housing development. You have client to developer to engineer to contractor, to landlord, to property manager. Um, by opening my own firm, I was able to embrace all those roles and wear all those hats. Um, we did get licensed as a construction firm. We're able to do our own development and our own investing, and we manage our own properties and are able to build ongoing relationships with our tenants. Um, so that's how we got into rentals. It's not an investment opportunity as much as a way to demonstrate that there is a better way to do affordable housing. Um of all of the strategies you've deployed, uh, why solar? And when did you first consider it? When did it uh, achieve the level of uh, efficiency or what have you uh, to include it in your, in your quiver? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would say first as the designers and builders and clients of these projects, uh, we have a lot of control. So we can talk about things like optimal roof pitches and orientation from the outset. And so I knew it was something we wanted to consider. Uh, the reason it was so attractive for my projects was that uh, solar 
power production represented a way to get money back into the tenants' pockets. So uh, to understand that, you have to think about how a housing voucher works. And when a tenant has a housing voucher, that's money for their total housing burden, represents both their utilities as well as their rent. So if we can minimize the amount that they're spending on utilities, then we can stretch their voucher further. Um, sometimes they don't need the entirety of their voucher for a comparable property in the same zip code. And in that case, the agency issuing the voucher can get that money back and they can use that money to house more people. So even without changing rents, we're getting more mileage out of the voucher system. We're preserving state and federal housing dollars and we're able ultimately to get more people into secure housing. The trick is getting the solar panels onto the units. Uh, obviously, the tenants don't have a lot of incentive to install solar panels that they own on my properties. Um, and that's a problem in Portland. Uh, with PGE's current rules, uh, the person on the electrical bill can only receive credit for the power generated by a solar array if they own that solar array. So out of the gates, it's really hard for a tenant to recoup any of that money. Uh, so what I do on my properties is I actually pay all their electric bills. Um, at the end of every month, I send them a PDF. It shows the total amount of power they used, as well as the power generated by the panels. And then I just charge them for the net power generated. So they're effectively able to save that money themselves. How did it feel? when you first saw a solar system working on one of your properties? Yeah, uh, it's amazing. I mean, it's really great. I admit I'm a little bit of a geek when it comes to stuff like this, but uh, you know, as an architect, I've worked in big firms across the country. I worked for a little while in Europe. It wasn't the first time I had seen a solar array that I designed get installed, um, but the sense of ownership was really rewarding. Uh, I'm a big believer that we're generating a lot of our power in a very unsustainable way. And so it was nice to be part of the solution. Um, I also think, and you didn't mention this specifically, but a &R Solar provides the panels. You also provide an option for a monitoring system. And I installed a monitoring system on one of my projects. Uh, you guys actually shared some of the cost on it. And it led to some really meaningful interactions with the tenants. like. This project in particular was a single mother. Uh, she had a couple kids and my unit was her first dwelling unit in many years. Uh, she and her children had been living out of their vehicle. So the first month they move in, they get their first utility bill and it was over $400. And it was just really devastating to this family. They had to ask for additional uh, rental assistance and moreover, the mother was kind of terrified, like, is this what I should be expecting <laughs> every month? Uh, but because of the monitoring system, I was able to sit down with them, look at their energy usage, see when it was going off and when it was spiking. Uh, it turns out that their thermostat wasn't set uh, at all. Uh, the, the mother had tried to operate the system, gotten frustrated and resorted to just turning on the electric oven and opening the door. And that's how she was heating the unit. Um, but as a result, we were all able to sit down and I taught them how to use the system, how to read the system, how to access the monitoring software. Uh, her children participated, which was a really powerful experience because now these youngsters are on the way to becoming literate energy consumers and operators of a, of a dwelling unit. So that was really great to see. Um, the monitoring system, it's it's like the Prius, you know, when it's been shown, when you get feedback about your consumption, you modify your behavior. So at the end of the day, that behavior, that consumption for a low income tenant uh, are dollars and sometimes a lot of dollars. So unless they have a hundred percent voucher and most of them don't, uh, that's money they could otherwise be saving every month. That's money back in their pockets, uh, in addition to it being a great educational tool. Thank you so much. How did you go about, I know it's been a, a, a bit of time, but do you remember how you went about selecting a contractor and what was important to you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was referred to ANR Solar by one of the socially conscious investors that I was working with on solar panel loans. Uh, I'll say just generally as an architect and a contractor, 
Uh, I don't mind paying more money to work with somebody that shares my values and understands my priorities for the project. Um, that's the most important piece of the relationship. Uh, but that said, I was really pleased that A&R Solar had very competitive rates. Uh, and the fact that you guys were a benefit corporation really reassured me that your values aligned with the mission of what we were trying to do at Infill PDX. Um, something else that was a huge benefit in working with A&R Solar uh, had to do with the tax incentives. So back when I was doing this was a period of transition in a lot of the tax rebates around and credits around uh, photovoltaic panel arrays. And it's complicated as a multifamily housing developer because there are pathways for residential homeowners uh, to recoup some of that value. There's another set of rules for commercial installations, but it's not really clear if you are developing multifamily properties, which path you follow. And so again, Dave Cozen worked with me really well, uh, understanding if we're talking about a section 25 or a section 48 deduction, um, but it was really important to get the tax thing right, uh, both to do the right thing, um, but also to make the system work. Because uh, what we were able to do is create a structure where I was making money due to my tax savings. My investor was making money due to the interest rate on, on the loan that she provided. And the tenants were making money, as I've discussed, by being able to pocket the production of the array. So. It created this really wonderful virtuous cycle where we were all making money and we were all investing in solar and you know saving the environment. So it was really critical to have a &R solar support in understanding that process. Brilliant, thank you. Um, maybe looking forward, tell us what the world of design and perhaps landlording looks like in uh, the renewable energy future. What's What's coming up? Well, uh, let me think about that. <laughs> there's there's a lot that's changing right now, especially in, here in Portland with respect to tenants' rights. Uh, I, I would say, you know, moving forward, it's clear to me that the need for renewable energy production is only going to increase, uh, and I don't see solar going away. In fact, I think it's going to be a primary driver of this new green economy. Uh, I also don't believe that technology is going to save us, so I think the future of renewable energy design is uh, an ecosystem of solutions, right? It's matching the solar panels and their productions to a storage medium or, you know, a battery system. Uh, what's the right energy efficient heating system or ventilation strategy um, paired with, you know, low use appliances and passive design strategies. Um, fundamentally, though, a building is going to be powered by electricity or gas. Uh, I am not comfortable with the environmental footprint of uh, natural gas extraction. So I tend to believe the future is much more electrical uh, in terms of energy. And I think solar has a huge role to play there. Um, in terms of moving forward, here in Oregon, I think we have a lot of work to do around microgrids and community solar. Uh, I know other places in the country are ahead of us in a lot of ways on that. Uh, here, our regulatory structures aren't quite set up to, to take that. Um, but I think developing a system of you know, microgrids or distributed batteries um, really provides a lot of benefits to homeowners and tenants that might not have a lot of great solar access, lets them get in on the solar pie. Um, it also builds resilience in communities. Um, we've learned a lot about uh, infrastructure failure here in the Pacific Northwest recently and uh, a distributed system is going to be a lot more resilient. So I think that there's a role for solar to play with that. Good, agreed. <laughs> Maybe by way of uh, wrap up, um, now that we've been through a number of questions here, and you actually answered several other ones that I would have asked, thank you. I, are there any questions you wish I would have asked you uh, now that we're closing up? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let me think about that. Uh, okay. I'll begin by saying that I'm always hesitant to reduce the conversation around solar or renewable energy uh, to payback and ROI. I, I just don't think that's a good way to frame renewable energy investment. Um, but 
Having said that, I think if solar panels or renewable energy solutions in general, if those are going to gain more widespread use and if they're going to pencil for more people, then there needs to be some sort of low interest loan. Um, we've already talked about how you can create this virtuous cycle um, with the right combination of tax incentives and uh, low interest loans. So I guess I'm curious if you guys have thought about that. I mean, I know there are lots of legal regulations around becoming an official lender, um, but at the end of the day, I think we as an industry have the technology. Uh, what we don't have is a scalable way to understand the potential of green investment.